Hi guys, Roxanne here from Tiny Home Living. Um, I haven't done any work yet today. Went to the city. Um, actually, we just went looking for a little window for the bathroom because it has to go in to this um, end of the sea can where the doors are. That's going to actually be the exterior wall of the bathroom and that's the two by six, two by six wall. So I needed a little uh, bathroom window. I wanted to get a frosted one, but didn't end up getting a frosted one. It's kind of nice to be able to see out anyway. So um, I got a little vertical slider and I ended up getting a couple more windows. One for my bedroom, which is going to be in the framed wall of the other sea can. That wall is going to be the end, of, uh, end wall of my bedroom. So I got a window for there too. And then on the other side, when you walk through the, the cutoff or the cutout from one sea can to the other, um, about 14 feet down on this side is going to be uh, the partition wall and then there will be a window there and I got a 48 by 36 for there. That's where I'm going to put um, a little dining room table. Actually the one that's the fold up one that's in my bedroom right now. The chickens are getting braver. They're coming down here. <laughs> it's good that they have um, the sea can too. There's one down there too. I think that might be rusty, but we think there might be actually another rooster. I'm not sure if that's rusty or not. Anyway, they were funny this morning because um, they, uh, when I opened the, the door to the coop, they all ran to the little door on the fence thinking they were all going to wander outside and they didn't get to go outside. It was pretty funny. All 25 of them were waiting at the little door. Um, to go out. It is still absolutely roasting out here. So um, it might be nap time for the old people. Actually, it's funny how going to the city seems like such hard work now, shopping. You just do your list and get it in and out as fast as you can. Um, Chris already checked on the babies. He actually um, had to quickly do some poopy bum before we went to the city uh, because there were a few of them and we were worried about leaving them the day without having that done. So you can see they're doing well. Chris did put the heat lamps here on for them last night. Um, Apparently it's supposed to be 90 for them and it was 80 last night so he put the heat lamps on. I think they would have been plenty warm enough but um, the ones that we had, the original ones that we had, I know it wasn't, it was got down to as low as 60 some days and of course that's why we were panicking and using the cardboard to hoard around them. And that's, uh, like I say, one of the advantages to doing this this time of year. They will actually grow and um, be harvested and put in the freezer before the cold weather comes. So, And even if the cold weather does come, they'll be full grown so it won't be as big a deal. So, I um, just wanted to show you them again, a little update. Again, we got more chickens. They seem to like going underneath the sea can and coming and going here. Don't really want them pooping in the entrance there, but um, what the heck's going on, guys? Uh, looks like we might have a thunderstorm tomorrow. Um, the garden is looking awesome. A bunch of them are staying in this. Oh, that that's rusty in there. So I think Chris is right. There might be an, another rooster. It's weird that um, it would only start looking like a rooster at this late date. 
I I think that's funny, but um, again, I've said before, we're not experts. <laughs> we watched the we've watched a lot of experts. Oh, I gotta get this gate unlatched. There you go. What do you think, Rusty? Hmm? You're the biggest rooster, aren't you? And the prettiest. Yes, you are. You might have some competition in this new batch, though. Yeah. That one that I saw down there, I thought looked like a rooster, too. That one there. But, maybe not. I don't know. It shows just <laughs> how bad we are when we don't know uh, which ones are roosters and which ones are chickens. I mean, obviously with Rusty we can tell. And he's much bigger too. You have some poop on your wing, Rusty. Clean yourself up. He's much bigger and he's um, got some really nice tail feathers and everything now. You can see the difference in size and everything. But I mean, it was pretty evident from early on that he was a rooster. So. <laughs> Not too sure. I opened the big gate because they seem to like to be able to go through there too. The grass seed is not doing well now since we've let them out, but um, whatever. They were they were having a great time running all over the place eating uh, clover yesterday. The difference in the potato plants in the last couple of days is just amazing. And you can look down and you can really see the rows now. And this one here, you can really see. So I think there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six rows Chris got planted. Could have had enough room for a couple more rows there. And uh, I, I prefer the red potatoes. This row seems to be doing the best for some reason. Um, but really pleased with that. Like I mentioned so many times before, um, really thought the whole potato patch, the roost dot thing was not going to work. And after putting that much effort, you know, the cutting and uh, you should have seen us out there raking up the uh, all the grass and hay that he cut, or straw, sorry, and um, and putting it on tarps and dragging it over here and piling it all in that nice, neat 30 by 40 foot um, square rectangle and uh, getting it ready to do the potatoes like we did that last year so that it would sit for a good long time and um, over the winter. And again, here's my crazy cayenne pepper plant. Look at this thing. I just can't believe for $8 how healthy it was. I think it had been burnt or something when I got it. And there are so many plants, so or so many peppers on this thing. It is absolutely crazy. And these are the ones that I started from seed. So look again at just... Like this is just this last couple days, all the new uh, growth. Those are the red onions that I took out of the um, groceries while well, they were in a bag. And um, put them in there because they had all gone to shoots. And the carrot, these were the free carrots. I decided to put them in here and see how they do. But this pepper plant, I'm just astonished at how many peppers are on this thing. Um, and then again, the little apple tree, the shoot that came off that Gloria apple, um, has got new leaves again this week. So, really pleased with that too. 
just going to go back here and check this um, new cherry tree that we got. Uh, a lot of the cherries were nothing but a seed, and I don't know if that's because the birds were eating them, but it was just like the cherry pit, right? Um, and now they're all going really dark red. When we got these, they were kind of yellow. They're all going really dark red, and these ones have all stayed on them. So I'm really amazed at such a small cherry tree, how many cherries it has on it. And again, the strawberries, since I brought them outside, have got so many new shoots and new leaves and everything, but are only starting to get blossoms on them now. So I literally got one strawberry out of here since I moved these outside. And you can see another decent sized one there. I was gonna show Chris one day and um, I got excited and just ate it. Didn't even show him. And the herbs. Like how much parsley do you need? Seriously, this was like a little tiny shoot of parsley. But you can never have too much basil. Never, ever, ever have too much basil. Pinch these seeds off. This is it. They say this is what you're supposed to do, but I find as soon as I pinch the seeds off, like they say you're supposed to do, some grass coming up in there, the bugs seem to attack them. So I don't know if I'm not doing it right or what. Um, but I pinch the seeds off. As soon as I do that, the bugs seem to get the plants. So I don't know. And, um, oh, that smells so good. Makes me crave bruschetta. So I, um, I think probably tomorrow, if I get up early enough, or maybe in the evening, I'm going to trim the um, tomato plants again. They need to be butchered again. And I'm pretty soon going to have to put the tomato cages around those because they are getting pretty big. And I don't want them falling over. Um, just going to have a look at this. I find it really odd that um, only one tree has apples on it this year. And you can see they are growing. Um, there are more in here somewhere. This this uh, tree got so many leaves on it. There's one there. This tree got so many leaves on it that um, it's like. So I find it really odd that this is the only tree, and I can't remember which species this is. It got apples on it. There's one up there. I thought there was a few more here. Um, one little one here. They got so many leaves on them and so much new growth. And so did these. But these ones, I can't find any apples on them yet. This one, yeah, this, these ones here are honey crisp. All of these ones. And they actually had huge apples on them last year. So I'm surprised that they're so healthy and yet there are no apples on them. But I did spray uh, all the leaves on all of these apple trees last week um, because of something eating the leaves. And you can see how some of them are like really healthy and there's still new leaves growing there. Um, lots of new growth, but lots of eaten stuff too. Um, I have to that. Yeah, lots of new growth, and we might have to prune a bit too. Um, but this tree was so loaded with uh, apples last year. This is the new one, and I'm hoping that it's going to be okay. We got it just before the drought. That's the Battleford that our friend said to get. And I got Chris to take the big O off of this little cherry tree 
so that I can get in here and chop all of this um, dead stuff off the bottom and prune this one a little. Because um, there is some dead stuff in there. And we only got like a few cherries on this one. You can see some of them here and there. A few cherries compared to this one here. But anyway, I am going to go in from the heat. Definitely not wearing the um, work boots yet. Um, see how we feel later about doing some framing. I'm actually going to do some baking and make Chris work alone. Put those studs in place. He doesn't really need me anyway. It's not like the old days, like I said, when we were standing up fully sheeted exterior walls with headers in them. This way, you stand up a two by three at a time. Put it in place. So, anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens a little bit later after the old people rest or nap or whatever. But uh, we'll check in a bit later. Well, it's about 9.30 at night, quarter to 10. I was unable to muster the troops to get any framing done. Um, this troop, part of the troop, um, spent a little time in the hammock. Didn't manage to nap, but um, I did relax in the hammock for a bit. I just want to show you the chickens. They're getting further and further down here. Um, and we would prefer that they come down this way and um, go that way to the garden in the hammock area and stay sort of in this treed area um, because then they're not, uh, like I say, open in the open where the hawks and the owls can get them. Um, Chris actually uh, just finished watering a bunch of the trees and has been watering the garden. And that's the problem too with hot days like this. Not only are we old and tired and need naps, um, and it's really hard to work in the heat, uh, but also you have to spend a lot of time watering the garden and the trees that you wouldn't normally if we got a nice thunderstorm. We might get one tomorrow, really hoping we do. Um, because that saves you a lot of time, right? We have a 400 foot of a hose going at the front and then a 100 foot are going out to the back um, to the orchard area. And uh, so it makes it nice not having to do all that, drag the hose around and um, also uh, spend all that time watering where you could be doing something else like this time of day. We could have gotten an hour or two, or two of framing done. Mind you, our friend Bob, who has been such an awesome neighbor. I told him yesterday when he stopped by with a friend that I was going to make my coffee toffee pecan pie, which he loves pecan pie, um, but this pecan pie has bourbon, espresso powder, chopped up score bars, um, vanilla, and double the pecans, chopped pecans, and all the pecans are roasted. <laughs> so, I promised him pie for tomorrow, so I did have to get that done while I was cleaning house. The other thing, uh, we got the windows unloaded, and um, the little bathroom one, oh, Chris has got them tied up so they don't fall over, so I've got a little bathroom one, I think it's 18 by 30. This um, one is going to be for my bedroom. I believe it's 48 by 36 and then this one is 48 by 48 that I'm going to put um, above the little dining table um, in the second sea can. So you can see this one here is the one I'm putting the utility room, kitchen, entryway and bathroom at the other end and then this one um, is going to have the living room at this end and the bedroom at the other end. So, um, the chickens are really liking being able to go out and wander around. Um, so that 48 by 48 is going to be for the other side, the other sea can where 
it'll be kind of looking into the tree line if it sits where it is now. Like I say, this might not be the, you know, this is just where we're building it. But, um, and that's another thing you have to think about when you design too, is that if you move it to a different site, is that window going to be facing north, east, west, south, whatever, right? So your everything might change. Um, anyway, uh, that's going to be it for today. One of the chickens is in the potato patch. I have to chase them out of my garden too. Um, little devils. Anyway. I think that's going to be it for today. I got to go check on. I actually got cleaning and forgot my pie in the oven for an extra 15 minutes. So <laughs> I doubt if Bob will have a fit and refuse to eat it. But anyway, I should actually maybe. I'm one of the things I'm I'm going to be doing down the road, and you can let me know if um, you think this is a good idea or not. Uh, I had a little bake shop in Ontario. I love baking and I love cooking. I love canning. Um, I mean, I was doing all that when I was a young mom, like, and, uh, where nobody else was doing that sort of thing at my age. But, uh, this is my coffee toffee pecan pie. And, um, like I said, um, I'm probably going to be doing not just uh, baking and cooking recipes, some of my favorite recipes, but also um, using the wood burning cook stove um, and doing videos using that. That's something I've wanted for such a long time and um, it's a perfect fit for an off-grid home uh, and a tiny home. This one is. So that's going to be something I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of in the future and um, you know, I think people will really enjoy that. Uh, but let me know what you think. And uh, if you want that recipe <laughs> for the coffee toffee pecan pie, it's insane. You have to cut the pieces small and you have to have vanilla ice cream with them because it is so rich. But I know J Bob's going to love it tomorrow. And he's bringing friends down, not only to look at the tiny house, but to have some pie with us. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. It's almost bedtime for us old people. So like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with your family and friends. And we'll see you next time.